So what is the idea of week five? Well, um, we're following up on uh, the reading of Jonas's uh, technology responsibility. And I think that uh, it seems natural to me uh, to immediately look at this issue of the singularity, however speculative it may be and controversial it may be in terms of being something that will really happen. Uh, but it really depends on what you mean by it. At the heart of the contemporary discussion of the singularity is the idea of the uh, emergence of a true artificial intelligence. And that is um, a, an artificial intelligence that will more or less be indistinguishable from uh, a human intelligence, um, I guess. But what's important about that, despite, you know, in, in, in addition to the landmark that that would be in terms of uh, technology and uh, human life, is that a, a true artificial intelligence would quickly become a super intelligence. And if it became a super intelligence, then there would be a whole host of issues that we would have to deal with that were unprecedented. Now, um, if you look at the early, uh, earliest uh, idea, formulated idea of the singularity by uh, Stanislaw Ulam in his tribute to John von Neumann, it doesn't really uh, specify anything about a, an artificial intelligence. Uh, it, it's a more general um, thesis that the development of technology had so changed uh, human life that um, we would have a sort of before and after, as he says, um, uh, approaching some essential singularity in the history of the race beyond which human affairs as we know them could not continue as moving into this period where the conditions of human life were changed so much that the sort of practices, I would suppose all the practices, ethical and otherwise, that we um, assumed were just the human practices would no longer uh, apply. Things would be just too different. And that, again, as he says, is the because of what he called the ever accelerating progress of technology and changes in the mode of human life. And that is very close to Jonas's idea of technology, um, that in this sense of the power of technology, we had moved into a, a totally new period and were faced with ethical problems which were entirely novel, and of course Jonas's idea that the old ethical frameworks that human beings have relied upon will no longer be sufficient to deal with this new situation. Uh, and of course Jonas has his ideas about sketching out what a new ethic would look like that would hopefully be sufficient to meet the new situation that the growth of te technology had uh, created for human beings. But he is admittedly speculative and, and knows that this is just a first try and that he's just sketching something very, very loose out. So, um, the again, the at the heart of the contemporary discussion of the singularity, let's say somebody like Bostrom, it is really um, a phenomenon or a projected phenomenon that is centered around the emergence of a uh, ultra-intelligent machine or a super intelligence. You can see there I.J. Good, I.J. Good uh, talk, talking of in terms of an ultra intelligent machine, which is really the mature version of the singularity idea that centers on this emergence of a super intelligence or what he calls an ultra intelligent machine, the intelligence explosion. Because of course this new, uh, this hypothesized super intelligence would not only be a kind of a challenge to the place of human beings in the sort of hierarchy of intelligence in the known universe, because it would be so much smarter than us. Presumably it would uh, result in so many breakthroughs, so many innovations, and so many changes in science and technology uh, that as I.J. Good said, it's the last uh, invention that human beings ever need to make because this intelligence would be much better at making new inventions and innovations uh, and that many of our problems would be solved uh, in terms of our uh, environmental problems, scientific problems, maybe even social problems, but that perhaps new problems as a result of that would emerge. Uh, so I think that 
the idea here is that uh, we're moving to an issue where clearly Jonas's idea that the old ethical frameworks just may not be sufficient to meet the challenge of the new situation created by digital technology, basically, uh, is very much uh, applicable to this issue because the whole idea uh, here is that we would be faced with completely novel situations, as, as I've just outlined. So we're kind of into the second part of the course, the, which is not to say that I'm saying that the Jonas thesis is definitely true. That is, I'm not insisting that utilitarianism or Kantianism or other ethical traditions, I'm not insisting that, that it, you know, it's clear that they're not sufficient to meet the ethical challenges of the singularity, other, other issues of the sort of post-digital uh, age. Um, but <clears throat> it, it very much is something that we need to be thinking about now. And as far as something like the uh, singularity, uh, the kind of ethical issues that the singularity would pose, can they be dealt with uh, in the old ways, especially utilitarianism and Kantianism, or do we need to develop, uh, according to something like Jonas, uh, new ethical frameworks which would uh, be sufficient for the new situation? Keeping in mind, of course, the objections to the idea of an artificial intelligence at all, there are very there are many people who just dismiss the whole idea as being just science fiction because they do not believe that uh, conceptually it's possible to develop a true artificial intelligence. But uh, that's a technical issue that I'm afraid I'm not competent to weigh in on.